Hi class, uh, the, the GROW module has been graded and released and I want to talk a little bit about uh, some best practices from that module. Let me start off with, uh, see I think this is from Emily, and uh, I want to point out, notice how she has put in bold her situation, task, action, result, so it's easy, it's really easy to follow. Uh, her response here. So uh, uh, make sure this, we do this every module on the behavioral interview question. Be sure to follow star, put them in bold. Either do the whole word like Emily has here or do the letter. Okay, um, let's look at another one. This one I think comes from Braylon. Um, look how he's used diet in his challenge. Same way he's got the letters, got them bolded. It's really easy to follow what he's doing here. And so uh, uh, you want to do the uh, same thing in, in uh, um, the next module, you, in the HUM module. You want to do star and diet and format them this way. So nice job, Emily and uh, Braylon. You're the best practices uh, for this module. I want to talk for a minute about... Uh, um, the conflict management group here in the text from the GROW module. You have this model and it says five ways of managing or dealing with conflict and you can see here we have avoiding, accommodating, compromising, forcing or competing, and uh, co uh, collaborative. And I, I've done a lot of work with this uh, with this test in organizations and uh, not too long ago uh, one of the co-authors uh, Ralph Kilman uh, did a, a webinar where he shared some of his uh, new research on this model and I just want to uh, briefly uh, uh, share with you what I learned from him. Num number one, uh, this model represents a situational approach so the, the the best style to use is a style that be the most effective for the situation you're in and that changes based upon the situation. So what you want to do is work to become flexible where you can use all five styles. Every one of these styles has a situation where it would be most effective. For example, avoiding if you're, um, you're, you're driving home after class and um, there's a driver uh, expressing road rage, you want to avoid that. You don't want to have contact with someone in their car who's angry. Uh, so sometimes avoid is the best choice. Uh, and I think in, in all conflicts, uh, timing makes a difference. So sometimes it's best to avoid resolving a conflict till the timing is right to do it. Um, we look at the next one, accommodating. Accommodating, uh, um, you go ahead and uh, you provide the service. Um, it's something that you're supposed to do, and it's just easier to do than to argue. And what it does, it builds up social credits. So um, if you need something done at work and you've been providing service to these people and you ask, uh, ask for a favor, they feel obligated uh, to reciprocate. So accommodating is good that it builds up these social credits. Uh, um, and, and by the way, they all have a downside. The downside of avoiding is if you, if you avoid too long, it escalates to a higher level, becomes harder to resolve. The downside of accommodating is if you're doing too much accommodating, you become overextended. Um, I want, I'll come back to compromising. Let's go to forcing, or some people call that competing. Um, a good example, uh, uh, retail shopping. Everyone uses competing in retail shopping. In organizations, we use competing to uh, protect boundaries um, that we can't cross. For example, say you're the team leader and the team says, hey, let's not work today. Well, that's, a, you know, you can't do that. It's a boundary, so you have to hold the boundary. The downside of forcing is that it um, can damage the relationship. And then things get tougher. So if you're uh, they're tougher to do in the future. So if you have an ongoing relationship, you want to be careful about using competing. Um, 
collaborating is kind of ideal. It's when, when you're able to do everything. In other words, we don't have, we, we can get all that I want, all that you want. The downside is that it takes time to collaborate, and sometimes you just don't have enough time to collaborate on everything. Now I'll go back to compromise. There's a rule for compromising. Compromising is the best choice um, when the needs are mutually exclusive. Now, what does that mean? Let's say that you're in a multi-shift operation at work, and first shift ends at 3.30, and second shift starts at 5. And um, we say, to you, uh, hey, do you want to have a, a joint meeting between the shifts? And first shift says, sure, as long as it's during first shift hours. And second shift says, sure, as long as it's during second shift hours. Well, that's not possible. They're exclusive. So that means we'll have to compromise. So compromise is the best choice when it's not possible to do both. And um, so those are your... Uh, your five conflict styles. And one of the things I found really interesting in uh, Kilman's research, he said he's been researching work environments and in the last 10 years, most of them are characterized as high stress work environments. And he says under high stress, these styles change. And for example, um, the forcing style turns into fighting. Um, the avoiding style turns into flight and the accommodating style turns into freeze. So that's your fight, flight, freeze response that comes from the amygdala due to stress. And then the um, collaborate and compromise go away. And these are your rational choices. So if you think under high stress, what you end up doing is fight, flight, or freeze with no option for uh, compromise or collaborate to uh, resolve the, the conflict. And so one of the things you want to be careful, matter of fact, I can say I've, or I've interviewed people in organizations and what I found out was that when uh, workers describe their leaders as having acted out like verbally uh, and uh, it was at times when they were under high stress, and that, that does make sense. So one of the things you need to monitor for is, uh, is your own personal indicators of when you're experiencing high stress, and you, you need to have a strategy that returns you to normal so that these conflict modes kick in and you have collaboration and compromise available to you. So, for example, uh, uh, one simple technique is a breathing technique is where it comes from uh, David G. Um, and he says, uh, uh, breathe in to the count and count to the count of four, hold it to the count of four, breathe out to the count of four, and then hold that to a count of four. So it takes 16 seconds. It's a, and it's just a, a, a breathing exercise. And at the end of that 16 seconds, it brings you back to the moment and brings you out of that stress temporarily. And then you can respond to a situation. And then following that, you know, if you need a longer intervention, you can, uh, you can um, remove yourself from the conflict and do that. So I did want to cover that. Um, I want to go through the uh, upcoming uh, module just uh, for a minute. Uh, in, in the human resources uh, module, I'll notice we got the behavioral interview question, describe a situation where you coached or mentored another person to achieve success. Now use STAR, make sure you use STAR to format your response. And uh, uh, do it the way Emily did. Uh, you, uh, you know, use the words or the letters, put them in bold, then write your response out. Now you can see you've got your uh, um, challenge, your IDC challenge, and uh, same way Braylon did, uh, where uh, he used diet and and uh, put a place them in bold, so it was easy to follow his responses to the challenge. Uh, make sure you do that. Uh, also, down here with your important term or concept from the text. Place that in bold. And that way, it's easy for people right away to see uh, see what you did. Um, 
create an exam question. Notice it says no true or false, no fill in the blank. And make sure you provide an answer and place the answer in bold. Um, also, uh, as you uh, uh, develop your response to the challenges, um, any keywords or phrases you use from the text, uh, place them in bold. And then when you're uh, all done, when we hit the second week, um, we need a, you need a minimum of five posts in the group discussion. This is true every week. And um, and so this is an overview of the HUM model. And uh, I had a pretty long list of best practices as, as I went through uh, grow grading. Um, I would jot down names when they did uh, um, everything right and became a best practice or pretty much right. And uh, had a pretty good list of names. So you're all doing really well. Um, once again, uh, I'd like to recognize Emily and Braylon uh, for best practices uh, for the GROW module, and I, I hope you're enjoying the class. Thank you.